Now this photo was sent to me by Amela, um, forgive me if I've mispronounced it, who lives over in um, Germany. It's uh, not far from where she lives, it's a nice little scene, We've got a nice um, bright sun set or sunrise, I'm not sure which it is to be honest with you. Um, I'm not quite sure what this is, but uh, I, I might just miniaturise that a bit in the painting so it doesn't dominate quite so much. Um, so let's have a quick look at the materials. I've got the paints in all the is the same order, ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, <coughs> Lizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt amber and light red. Beneath the palette we've got our three brushes, a three quarter inch flat, large on rance and ache and a number three rigger. I've got my water jar, um, I'll get the paper in a sec and up here I've got my uh, tea towel, they're always holding my left hand just to wipe the uh, excess water off the hake onto. Again a quick look at the photo before we start. Now this is clear water with a large run ransom ache all over the paper, that way it will stretch evenly. You've got to worry about it crinkling. And I'm just dipping the tips back in just to bring the ends back together like so. Now I'm going to go a bit of raw sienna, clean the brush, excess water off on the tea towel, and then lemon yellow, a bit of light red as well. See that nice sort of sunsetty colour, and then just sort of down the middle, something like that. A bit too much water, a bit more yellow. And then coming in from the sides, I'm just going to clean the brush again, take the excess off, and I'm going ultramarine, a bit of light red in there as well, and a bit of Payne's grey as well, it's really dark in here. And I'm just sort of coming in from either side like that, right the way down. more blue. I haven't cleaned the brush. A bit more blue, maybe on this side. Okay, I was going to do some clouds but I might just... No, let's, let's pop a few in. A bit of tissue. Just pop a few little clouds up in the sky there. Maybe some little ones just over there. Just adds a bit of texture to it. Don't want to overdo it. Want to keep it nice and predominantly dark. Watch your pools of water gathering at the bottom of the paper. Just take them out like that. You can see already the paper's stretched a bit. See how it's coming away from the board. So I'm just going to refix that, pull it tight so it's flat. And then while that's still actually I might um I might dry it first actually. Let's give it a dry. have to be bone dry as long as the paint stopped moving. We've got a nice sort of glow in the middle. Now I'm using the same colours, well I'll say that, sort of leaning towards blue because I'm going to put in the distant land there. Just about in the photo, just about to see. First of all work out where you're rising, don't put it slap bang in the middle, just come slightly south of centre. Somewhere like that. That's just, this is the most distant land there. You can just about see it on the horizon. I 
that'll do for that. And then start in front of that. I'm giving a bit more lemon yellow. Because over there, like that. A bit of raw sienna. And then just see a few little. A few little trees on the horizon, so I've just introduced a little bit of Payne's grain to the mix. Something like that. And just a few on this bit of, bit of land here on the right hand side. A few little trees and dips and dabs, that'll do. So I'll clean the brush, and in front of that, I want some just some nice brightly lit grass. So I'm just giving just the lemon yellow on its own. Give that a quick sweep across there like that. Just the lemon yellow. You see how it's still bathing all that nice sun. Bringing that right the way down. And I'm sort of sort of going sort of down to the bottom right hand side of it because this side is going to be more sort of shadowy. So that's that. And then on the left, let's put, do it with a bit more shadow. So I'm just going to introduce a bit of Payne's grey. And then this is sort of we've got all bits of grasses and brambles and all sorts of stuff going on there and obviously we're going to have the trees to put in the sea so I'm just getting that in nice and dark lemon yellow all your green colours basically ultramarine lemon yellow Payne's grey and then just What I might do is clean the brush and then just the light, just the lemon yellow again, just that sort of nice lighty colour, and just do these little gaps. Just fill in those little gaps. Now let's put these trees in. I'm going to do them dark so there's no need to clean the brush. All I've done is dip the water, dip it in the water just to bring the air back together. And I'm going a bit of light red, burnt umber, and then to really darken it, the ultramarine blue. And let's start with let's start with this one on the right hand side. It's sort of and that goes right off the top of the page. It's a little bit darker, wider on there. And one that goes off there like that. And you've got this big one that continues. Looks a little like that. So being a bit thicker. A bit thicker there. In with the rigger, same colours, just using the rigger brush, plenty of water, a bit more water. And it's just putting some slightly thinner branches. I'll come back to that in a minute with the leaves. But first, let's do the one now, just to the left of it. Let's 
somewhere like that. I don't want to put it right in the middle. I just want to copy just slightly right of, of centre, I think. I mean, something like that. Again, it's, it's going up and... Right up off the top of the page. Let's get that brown trunk in a bit, just slightly wider. And then a big one. Big branch going off like that, and it sort of, and sort of mingles with the other tree over here on the right hand side. Switch to the, the rigger again. Again, plenty of water, nice and dark. Yes. Just put in the skeleton of the thing, really, for now, because a lot of this will be covered by the uh, by the leaves. Now to do the leaves, I'm going to clean the brush first. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? Get that dark bit back on the brush. And then, I'm not sure what that thing is there. Let's just plonk that in. It's like, a, I don't know if it's like a notice, a notice board or, or something like that. It sort of comes down. Again. I'll just blend that in at the bottom in a minute. There's also like a little some little twigs and things coming up. For now, I'll blend them in in a minute. So for now I'm going to clean the brush and as I'm drying it really scuff it up scuff it up on the tea towel and then I'm going to dip it into those green colours but I want a nice really dark there's going to be a lot of panes grey in there ultramarine just bang it in, bash it in down like that Start popping those, pop those leaves on. You can see it's just like a mass of leaves at the top there. Remember, you want to leave, you want to be able to see through the tree. Don't get totally crazy with it. things there. Somewhere on there, there. Obviously, I've got that bits of grass down there. Either do it like that, just flick it down, or alternatively, you can try sort of flicking it up, try it that way. The grass there, I'm just flicking it down. I don't want to encroach too much on that sort of nice light there, yeah. Right, let's get down. Maybe a bit of, even a bit of light red just to change. Change it slightly.
back to the rigger. Get a burnt umber, awesome marine. Let's just flick in a few more of these like, little twig things. sorts of things growing in these bushes. Just cleaning it again, just scuff it up once more. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a quick dry. I've just put a little bit of white gouache down there on the uh, on the palette and I'm just going to dip, you see how the air's all over the place, just a very easy way of making some nice little flowers, just dipping the airs, so it like that, so you got something like that, and then just give it into the, just give it into your darker areas, look, and you see how that nice sort of flower effect, see how easy that is to do. Going a bit crazy with it now. That'll do. It just gives the effect of some nice little flowers in the foreground. Um, what have we got up there? It's just. Scuff the rigger up on that. Right, and then just pop some. Just another little way of doing it. Instead of using your hike, just use the rigger if you want. Just really again scuff the airs up. You won't damage it, don't worry about damaging it. Get all your, your paints on. Don't mind, that's just too dry. Too dry. I'm going to try that again. I'm just sort of twirling it round like that. Right, now this should go on. You can see how it's frayed out like that. And then just pop it in. left now. Actually, I'm just, just still not quite happy with that. Just get a bit more random. And then all that's left take your rig it again and just pop your signature. In the corner, and that's another one finished. So let's have a closer look at it. So here's our finished painting. Let's uh, see how it compares to the photograph. 
you can see composition wise I've, I've kept it pretty similar really see one of the main things I tried to keep this nice light yellowy glow right down the middle of the scene to the most distant land again put in with that blue sky colour and then just use sort of lemon yellow predominantly just to try and keep this uh, open land area nice and bright which contrasts against the sort of more foreground shadowy area you can see these lighter little flowers in the foreground in the see how easy they are to put on with a bit, a bit of white gouache dry the painting first and then put them on with the gouache Well thanks for watching, I hope you like that. Keep practicing, any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.